A nearly 100 year old building that had a date with the wrecking ball finds a new lover. World renowned Chicago artist Theaster Gates bought it for a dollar. Five million dollars later, the doors are open to everybody. He invites us to reimagine the South Side. People always want to see the space. I mean, from every part of the process. A global star of contemporary art, Theaster Gates could be just selling his art and making millions. Instead, he's selling a vision, reimagining the South Side through art and urban planning. The Stony Island Arts Bank is his most ambitious project to date. People get to celebrate the culture of black people, where amazing music and exhibitions, performances, public talks will happen. Located on Stony Island at 68th Street in Chicago's Grand Crossing neighborhood, this bank was built in 1923 and last abandoned in the mid-80s after the area changed from all white to all black. Just two days before the wrecking ball, Gates convinced the mayor to let him try an arts-based transformation in a neighborhood that needs it. People have been very receptive, but there are practical concerns like, Will my kids be able to benefit from this thing that seems to be made for other kinds of people? Since you're making it so nice, is it really for us? I feel like I've committed a big part of my life to trying to figure out how can there be equity. During the last five years, while Gates' star has been rising on the international art scene, he's leveraged his fame to create the Rebuild Foundation. It's already built the Dorchester Projects, turning ordinary homes into places where people create and connect. The Arts Bank is a major scale up, a five million dollar project. You, so you paid a dollar for the building. And what did that mean? Yeah, I, I, It's like a free building. Right. Things are very, very rarely free. To raise the startup funds, Gates sold art that he created from the bank's only remaining currency, white marble slabs pulled from the building and carved into bonds sold for $5,000 to $50,000 each. Though the old vault remains, the new arts bank will hold cultural assets. The mezzanine level is dedicated to Johnson Publishing Corporation's library and archive and it's an amazing book collection. The Johnson Publishing Company's library installed here includes its iconic magazines, Ebony and Jet, the leather-bound complete set, one of only two in the world. It's a literary journey I found very personal. So I just picked up a, a volume and found Bill Cosby on the cover. The Pleasures and Problems of Being Bill Cosby. Could that not have been a headline or a title of an article written today? And it is by my father. Wow. Music also plays a big role in the new arts space. Frankie Knuckles. This is his vinyl collection. Wow. How many albums? About 3,500. Down the hall from the Johnson Publishing Collection is the house that Frankie Knuckles built. He's the late Chicago DJ known as the godfather of house music. Frederick Dunson is executive director of the Frankie well, Knuckles Foundation, thrilled to partner with Gates. He thought enough of the collection to want to keep it vibrant. Mm -hmm. And so it would give, you, you know, uh, in one of the conversations we had, he said that he thought DJing was a lost art on, on our community or, or our youth. And so this will provide them an opportunity to feel, touch, hear, and maybe develop their own sound. Some of Gates' own work will exhibit here as well. It is very contemporary, using reclaimed materials and sending social messages. But for him, the real work of art is erasing the lines that divide us. My greatest hope would, would be that black space is seen as an asset, not a problem. Um, that we would find ways of taking these guns off the street and taking them out of the hands of our young black men, that we would create as many um, educational and economic opportunities as we do prison cells, that we would start to believe that, that the lives of poor people actually matter in making this world rich.